Greetings. This is uh, Professor Laudia Santiago. I am going to be presenting in this video some information on optical character recognition and its uses for with a particular focus on historians and historical research. Optical character recognition, better known as OCR. What is it? Why is it useful? embedded versions and standalone versions and how it can be used in managing full text searching. That's what we're going to cover in this video. OCR is a product, software product that reads the text, the typed text that is embedded in an image. An image usually is dumb about what's in the image. If it's text, it doesn't know that it's text unless OCR reads it. So when you generate a graphic with a camera or a scan of any sort, the text embedded in it is might as well be a photo of a cat, right? Uh, until OCR can process it and recognize it as text, it is not uh, lifted uh, as a as a as a character as characters through a font, right? So what OCR does, it'll read an image and a JPEG, and it'll produce a secondary file. JPEGs cannot contain the data for the text. It'd have to be in a Word or PDF, which is more typical version of the document that then embeds the original photo, if, if that's what you like, right? But makes the uh, text searchable, right? And typically, if, you, if you're familiar with the um, PDF files that you can download from Hathi Trust Library, um, usually those have been subjected to OCR uh, because that's how Google and Hathi Trust make them searchable. Right? So when you download a page or a full uh, PDF from Hathi Trust, it uh, has already been converted, right? So we're doing the equivalent of that with our, with our own OCR and with our own data or PDFs and JPEGs, right? So you might have JPEGs that are not readable in that sense, and you might have uh, PDFs that are not readable. And the whole point of using OCR is to make them readable, right? Now, to make them readable, um, you know, you don't need the OCR for you to read it with your eyeballs, right? Um, however, um, there's two functions that are really critical for research when you have a lot of these images, right? One of them is to be able to cut and paste, right? So you find a nice phrase or quote or paragraph or or you simply want to produce a text only version of what you're working with, then you use OCR. And the other piece is to make it searchable so that when you have hundreds of these files, you can actually search for the content. In other words, the PDF <clears throat> makes it uh, uh, allows it to be picked up by the indexing software that you might be using, which we discuss in different videos, right? So the first thing I want to show you is that there's <clears throat> three versions of OCR, right? You can upload your files in this um, OCR space, right? And this will do do the OCR for you. And problem with this is that it probably isn't fast and it probably isn't secure uh, in case you have something that you don't want and anybody else looking at. And possibly that it's not very good. I haven't tried it. And you can't do batch, batch files. You can't do a lot of files, right? There are other public domain options like this, um, which are very difficult to use and learn because these are um, 
you you can download the the software but it's not user friendly right um this is another option right open source and the best option is tesseract which if you go to their website it looks like this right uh it's it's a downloaded bunch of files um and this hasn't been updated in a while but it was very powerful and uh, you know if you're if you're into tinkering with software you can download this and and make it work but the best uh, options are those that are embedded or those that are standalone now embedded means that a larger software like adobe acrobat has one of, has one of its many many features ocr right so in adobe um you can use the software uh to to turn a pdf that does not have ocr into a, a text recognized um and um i can show you this for example if you can select the text, it's already OCR'd, right? But um, if you want it to turn it into an OCR file, right, any PDF, that option, scan an OCR, would take this image and read it so that it's searchable, right? You can see here that you can cut and paste the text. It separates the text from the PDF. Um, so so adobe this through the suite that rutgers of uh, uh, faculty and and students have for free uh, through adobe um, the adobe package uh, of software you can open a pdf turn it into ocr right and i mean turn it into uh, text right you can scan uh let's see where is um scan from a scanner where is it create files right from a scanner so if you have a scanner you can uh, scan something into pdf right and while you scan it it'll read it into uh, ocr right it'll ocr it into text searchable so um let's say you took some you know some photos of some documents right uh and somebody gave them to you in print and you're going to scan them although when you scan them you can you could also add the text to the to the pdf um but there's other things you can do with adobe uh where uh you can do batch pdfs right there's an option um let's see scan an ocr in multiple files if you see this option here you can um take multiple pdfs and, and ocr them at the same time it takes a while right uh and obviously you can do manipulations like correcting the recognized text um but this is very powerful when you have a bunch of stuff you want to process all at once right and the option here for example if you have a lot of jpegs in one same folder that are that, that you know that they have high quality images of typed text right that's what it takes right um then this this option is great because it processes it all at once and you can choose to produce separate pdfs for each jpeg or you can merge into one pdf so let's say you're operating on a folder and you have a bunch of stuff uh let's see if i can find one here a bunch of stuff that's text right these pages here right and um I would have to straighten them out right uh these here right that little document there uh i would have to straighten them out right and which is easy to do here right you can just uh 
rotate. So, all right, this is document. So whatever, I want to turn this into an actual text. I'd like to you know, publish it. And uh, so I select these files and I right click and um, I can convert to an Adobe PDF and the, in the Adobe PDF, I can choose to make it OCR, right? Uh, and also from Adobe PDF, having uh, compiled these images into one PDF, I can also then have Adobe um, take the whole PDF and instead of embedding the searchable text, produce a separate file. So if I don't want the OCR to be embedded in the, in the graphics, I can tell it with this PDF that I just created from 10 pages, right? You can then produce a Word file <laughs> with that text. Right, and it's going to be a little messy. It doesn't. It's not going to have a lot of the formatting. Uh, the OCR, for the most part, on on Adobe, does not preserve a lot of the formatting. Uh, and if you have fancy columns, things like that, like from a newspaper, then it's going to be a little tricky to 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 get it to function right. Uh, and in that sense, Adobe Acrobat is not the best uh, uh, program because Adobe does. Adobe Acrobat does a lot of different things, and it's not specially prepared for for this kind of, of just this single function. So, but it's an, a good example of embedded because it's part of a suite of functions to to work with PDFs, right? The other examples of embedded are in my in I'm, I, describe the software elsewhere basically any good file manager software this is uh, file center um and um right this is you know one of my cabinets one of my folders one of my files and it's text right and i'm like oh i want this quote from this right so it has a built-in ocr function right here and then you can decide what you're going to do with the OCR. And actually, I think this program has a function where if you OCR it, it appears to be within the um, within the uh, image itself. Now, this doesn't look like very good quality for OCR. Let's give it a try. Oops, not responding, sorry. There are many of it disappeared from view. Uh, where did it go? Here we go, here's the menu. Okay, so recognize text, send OCR text to Word. That's what I mentioned earlier. Uh, it'll save it as a PDF, so it, it saves it as a separate file. Um, with the same name or a similar name and lots of different options here, right? And you notice here that Read Iris is the software that is used within this program that is embedded in this program to read the text, right? Um, and, oh, look at that. It has Tesseract as, a, as an option, right? which might or might not involve downloading it. I'm not sure. I think Read Iris is, is built in, but I think Tesseract, you have to download it separately, right? And obviously you have a lot of options here. And the other thing is you can batch process a lot of these, right? If you do this, select them all, and you go to OCR, uh, does not allow multiple files. Oh, look at that. I am wrong about that. Maybe there's a different way of doing it. There, there should be a different way of doing it, but I don't rely on, on OCR for with, in this uh, program. But if you're looking for cheap options, these file managers, at least they have basic OCR embedded. And here is Paperport, which is the other file managing software that I've recommended. And um, if I were to find a, a JPEG here, um, this is again my New York project, which some of you might be familiar with already. And uh, 
This was school on paper. So here's an image. Let's see, this is an image or a PDF. Some of these are already been processed. So I'm going to open this and I think this is a JPEG. So uh, there's an OCR option, but here um, you have to drag and drop, right? Um, so in this case, you take the file or files, these two, and you drag and drop them to either PDF or Word format. And once you drag and drop it into the Word, it's automatically recognizes it. See there? And, uh, you know, it'll probably be a messy result because these, uh, these OCRs are very basic. Uh, and uh, it's something that you have to clean up, especially because the image in this case is not very good. Let's see. But this is not too bad. And then you can fix the typos. And um, the, the scanner that I used, the overhead scanner that I used at this point for these documents did not have a very high resolution, but the scanners that I use now have a much higher resolution. So I wouldn't have this kind of problem with, with the quality of the image and the quality of the lighting, as you can see here. Um, and this is why it's important to kind of think of all the pieces in your flow. So how they work together, right? Look at the imperfection and the scan here, right? Okay, so so Stan, um, I'm sorry, uh, built-in uh, OCR is it's there already, right? And you might have just encountered it and not been able to use it because you didn't know about it. Uh, and um, standalone OCR is ideal, right? Uh, and um, Abby Fine Reader is the leading is the leading package, right? Uh, and they market it as a PDF software, trying to compete with Adobe. It used to be that they sold it as a as an OCR package, not a PDF package. But uh, here they're selling it as a P PDF package, and it's a service now, like a lot of software you subscribe for yearly or every three years or whatever. They might have educational pricing. Uh, and um, their engine, their OCR engine is licensed to many other people. Like when you buy a scanner, the scanner automatically brings a mini version of Abby or, or Read Iris. Uh, and you can buy, if you don't want to do the subscription version of Abby, you can buy the standalone version, which is the previous version, Fine Reader 14. Educational pricing is 140 bucks, which ain't cheap, but if you buy it as an upgrade, it's a little cheaper. In other words, if you're if you have a scanner that brought some other OCR, it's they'll sell it to you as an upgrade. Uh, or an earlier version of Abby or simple version of Abby. Um, but I find that that it's extremely useful to have the standalone. Um, And IRIS OCR is the alternative, and it's probably a little cheaper. And it's probably just as good, right? And uh, they also sell um, hardware. So um, any hardware that they send, that they sell, comes with a, um, a miniature version of the software, right? I'm sorry that this is being darkened here for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, so Iris is one of the, one of the alternatives, uh, in the OCR market. And, um, so Abby is this, it's this software and, uh, it's, it's very straightforward in the sense that it's a simple, all it really does is one thing. It takes your files, JPEGs or PDFs usually, and reads them into readable PDFs, words, or you know, other, other sorts of files like uh, spreadsheets. Um, and it's very good at batch processing. In other words, um, turning 100 JPEGs into one PDF with OCR, right? 
and it'll run on its own. And you can do that directly in this interface by telling it which files you want to work with, or you can do it from File Manager. So um, if I wanted, for example, to turn these, these, these images here, this document uh, into an OCR PDF, I go to the um, File Manager, I right click on it, I show more options because these options, uh, Windows is now separating them. Um, and see, combine into one PDF or convert with Abbey Fine Reader 14. And if I say combine, it takes them all. And sometimes I do it with 500, 600 files. And it turns it into a PDF and it reads it to make it text recognizable. The students. We'll scan these these old books and stuff, right? Like this. So they scan old publications into JPEGs, right? And with a sewer scanner, C Z U R, they do it very quickly, very high quality, very quickly. And the scanner itself has built in OCR. It's just that I want to be able, so they could be doing it themselves. In other words, they, they scan these images and they would turn it into a PDF very easily, even within the software package that the scanner brings. But I like to kind of have an elegant breakable flow so that I can save these images, have this separately and use the higher quality OCR. So I'll go to this. I'll tell Abby to read, to do the same thing I just described, right? And it turns all these JPEGs into one readable, searchable PDF, right? Um, and um, so Abby, fine reader, standard 14 um, or equivalent version, right, is recommended. Now, the why bother with all of this? Uh, the reason is that, like I like I said, um, it makes for cutting and pasting of text that you have um, in your within these PDFs or within these uh, JPEGs. It makes it, you know, you can cut and paste it, right? But you can also search it, and um, the, this is my Copernic. It looks a little weird because of the screen resolution. But um, when you do a search, see that obviously my chapters are going to show up, right? And my manuscripts, those are Word files. But there's going to be um, PDFs like this that only would be. I'm sorry that this is not showing right, but um, you can see it here in the corner. If the PDF is full text, in other words, has text in it, it's only going to show up in the indexing if it has been made into text, right? Uh, and obviously, a lot of journal articles, I think this is a journal article, actually, uh, that you download show up that way, but um the for example I, I i scan in important old books right and um by colleagues by you know stuff from the 60s and 70s that are not available available digitally i scan them in myself 10 20 30 critical pages i turn it into single pdf i usually delete the original jpegs and then i run it through abby fine reader so that when I do a search for a specific name, person, or place, or event, or whatever, it'll pick up references in those documents. Um, and um, and so, so making it searchable is ultimately the, the most important value of, 
of OCR. Um, it also has other functions when you're when you are teaching with certain files or this you annotation tools that that the students uh, you want them to annotate a text, and sometimes the software that um, allows for them collaborative annotation through Canvas. Uh, through Canvas tools, uh, it requires uh, OCR text, right? A text with with uh, I mean a, a PDF with with uh, liftable, so to speak, text. Uh, so you have to run it through you know uh, uh, OCR. Sometimes a website that has an article will only allow you to download a graphic only version, and then you have to run it through OCR. So anyway, uh, I recommend uh, Abby Fine Reader, or you can use the free options that are available to you, or the embedded options that are available to you. If you buy a scanner, check out the software. It's usually the thing in the software that that um, nobody uh, pays any attention to, and often um, with the the Adobe Acrobat tool, not the not the free but the one that comes with the institutional paid software right full adobe acrobat uh includes you know plenty of ocr and uh, and when you scan some something in right um check out all these options right um you can even if the if the ocr and scan file are too big, you can make them smaller, right? Uh, you can scan directly, right? Which is very cool into a PDF with OCR performed, right? Uh, now, if you have a document that is like multi-columns, like old newspapers, I recommend that you do use Abbey Fine Reader because one of the things about Abbey Fine Reader is that it's much better with small fonts it's much better, it's faster, it's more accurate, and it preserves columns. It has even, in some cases, I have been preparing certain dissertations, old dissertations and master's theses for publication. So so what I'm given is a, a an, even in one case, a typed, an old typed manuscript where the footnotes are typed at the bottom, right? Uh, and then there's text. So when I fed it through the scanner, I ran it through Abby, and Abby was able to understand that the things at the bottom are footnotes. Uh, and all I had to do was then associate number one with number one, number two with number two, um, and also frequently with multi-column documents, it is a, it understands that the left side column is different from the right side column, so it doesn't mush all the text together, which is sometimes happens with Adobe or with simple minded OCRs. Uh, so this technology has improved tremendously in the last 10 or 15 years because it's really a derivative of office based software where what 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 businesses really do is they use these services on servers at super high speed with millions and millions of documents that get read and database-based. So we're getting the kind of uh, overflow of that technology. Um, and if you notice that Abby, that's that's really what they sell, right? Uh, the, the, the business end. <laughs> um, so, okay, uh, any questions in the comments below? And I will put some of these links in there uh, a little bit after posting this video. Hope it was useful. Take care.